Hey, what's up everybody? It's David McGill. Now, in this video, uh, I had a question from a subscriber that asked if I can do a video explaining um, how to do uh, IFTA tax returns. So in this video, I'm going to break down the information you need to complete your quarterly IFTA tax returns. Now, before I get into the calculation, let me explain what exactly IFTA even is. So it's, it's spelled IFTA and it's an acronym for International Fuel Tax Agreement. Now, basically what this is, is there is a tax that you pay on fuel and depending on where you purchase your fuel from versus where you're traveling, the state where you paid the tax, they may be required to split that money with the states that you drove in. So we have to file this tax return every quarter where we report the miles that we travel in each state along with the number of gallons of fuel we purchase in each state. So now that we kind of have a general background of this quarterly tax filing, I'm going to get into the breakout of, you know, how I compute the information needed for this filing. Now, it's going the actual filing itself is going to vary by state. Um, here in Indiana, um, I file my IFTA taxes for myself and for my clients online through the Indiana portal. Now, if you live in a different state, the portal may be different. However, the information that you're going to need in order to complete that tax return is going to be pretty universal and standard across the board. Now, the first thing you want to do um, when you're, you know, coming up with your work papers for your, your tax return is you want to look at how many miles you travel in each state um, for a particular quarter. Now, where can you get that information from? Um, most companies are required to, you know, use electronic logs. So depending on which um, electronic logging company you're using, um, a lot of times the GPS trackers that are, you know, um, installed on the, on the device, um, they also track how many miles you're driving in each state. So every quarter um, I look at my logs and I run the IFTA reports where I can see, all right, here are, you know, in this example, I'm only traveling in the Midwest in these five states. Well, I can run my report and see how many miles I traveled in each state. So that's the first thing, um, you know, that I, that, I, that I put on my spreadsheet. So for example sake, let's say in Indiana, I traveled, you know, 5,000 miles this quarter. Kentucky, Let's say it was 2,000. Illinois, let's say 500. Let's say Ohio, 1,000. Let's say Michigan, 1,500. So the total miles that I travel this quarter were 10,000 miles. And again, I was able to get this information from my electronic log reports. Once we have the miles traveled, the next important thing that we need is how many gallons of fuel we purchased in each state. Now, how do we get that information? Well, when you're buying fuel, you're going to get a receipt. So what I do is for my clients who, who, who are just, you know, they don't have a fuel car and they just buy fuel, you know, as they need it, you know, paying cash, they drop off a ton of receipts to me. I go through each receipt and I separate them by state. So I have all of my Indiana fuel receipts in one category, you know, in one box. I put all my uh, Kentucky receipts in another box. Now, I, once I have those, you know, states separated, I then go through and I look at, um, or I tally up how many gallons of fuel were purchased in each state. So I'm sitting down with my calculator or my spreadsheet, and I'm just adding up every Indiana receipt, the number of gallons um, that were purchased. Once I'm done with Indiana, you know, I'll make, you know, I'll make my, my notes in my spreadsheet. So let's say, the number of gallons in Indiana purchased were 
a thousand. And then I go on to each other state that I have fuel receipts and I do the same thing there. Um, you know, Kentucky, maybe 500. Um, Illinois, I may not have any receipts for Illinois. Ohio, that could be 100. And Michigan, for example, say could be, um, let's just say 400. So the total gallons purchased would be 1,000. Now, once I have this information, once I know how many miles I traveled in each state and also how many gallons of fuel I purchased in each state, I can then um, you know, go into the IFTA tax return and enter that information um, in the appropriate boxes. There's gonna be somewhere on your return, it's gonna ask you, hey, what states did you travel in? And you'll list those states. Then it's gonna say, how many miles did you travel in each state? You'll go ahead and enter the miles traveled in the appropriate box. Then you'll do the same thing for the gallons of fuel that you purchased. Now, a quick tip on the fuel purchases. So if you're somebody who, um, so let, let's walk this out. If, if you buy fuel, um, cash or, you know, you use your debit or credit card, you know, every time and you don't have a fuel card, if you go in and prepay for your fuel, let's say you go in and say, hey, I want 200 gallons on pump 20. They're going to give you a receipt right then and there. It's going to be a prepay receipt and it's going to show that you spent $200 on fuel and it was for pump 20. Most people will go out, they'll fill up their trucks um, and then once they're done, they'll leave. And they have this receipt that shows they put $200 worth of fuel in their truck. Well, the problem with that receipt is it doesn't list the number of gallons that you purchased. So in the event that you're going to prepay for fuel, once you do, once you once you're done pumping your pumping your, your diesel or, you know, your gas, go back into the into the truck stop or into the gas station and ask for a finalized receipt. Once you have that finalized receipt, it's going to show, you know, what state you purchased the fuel in, um, how much you spent um, in total for the fuel, and also how many gallons of fuel you bought. Because that gallons number is going to be the number that you're going to enter on your IFTA spreadsheet. Um, another simple, another way to help simplify the gallons purchased um, calculation is by getting a fuel card. Um, not just a credit card, but a specifically a fuel card. Because if you have that fuel card, chances are um, you'll get a monthly or a weekly statement or however often they bill you, you'll get a statement. That statement is gonna list out where you bought fuel from by state, also how many gallons you bought and what your total, what your total fuel purchase was. So instead of having to go through, you know, a shoebox full of receipts and tallying up this information by state, if you're using a fuel car, a lot of that information is gonna be summarized um, monthly for you already. So it'll save a little bit of time in this preparation piece. Now, hopefully that explained, um, you know, how you get the information for your fuel tax, for your if the fuel tax return. Uh, well, before, before I close, I wanna point out one other thing. Um, in this example, you'll notice we have fuel in more in, in fewer states than we've actually traveled in. And maybe at first glance that may seem odd, but if you think about it, if you traveled in Illinois 500 miles, but you didn't purchase any fuel there, all that means is, you know, you had enough fuel like you just drove through Illinois or you just you crossed the state line came back and bought fuel in a different state. So this isn't, this isn't odd for you to have miles traveled in the state, but not, um, not gallons purchased. What would be odd though, and you know you'd have a, a problem in your, in your records if that was flipped the other way around. If you've purchased fuel in a state, you should have corresponding miles traveled for that same state because how else, how are you in the state to purchase fuel if you didn't, you know, drive any miles in the state? 
So if you find yourself with a problem like that, I'd, I'd recommend that you go back and, um, you know, and double check your trip reports. Um, also, you know, your e-logs um, to make sure that um, all of the information that you're entering in your fuel tax return makes sense. Now, hopefully that answered your question, uh, Fritz. Um, and anybody else, if you have any questions, um, feel free to leave a comment in this video. And like I said before, if enough people are asking the same question, I'll shoot a video on it to hopefully help help you know help out a group of people. Um, please like this video, um, leave a comment like I said, and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Another thing, if you know somebody who could benefit from this information, please feel free to share with them as well. Thanks again for watching.